Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which I actually saw the film last week, which I had a good time. Um, I didn't do any videos for a while because I was very busy, as you can see, so of course I just never had that much time to do. So basically I'm just going to do one video at a time, but if I thought about maybe doing another video, then I'll try to see what I could do. But for now, we'll see what happens. But anyway, I just want to go see the film Logan, which is considered to be um, the final film that features Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, since he's been playing the role for only 17 years. That's right, ever since uh, the X-Men movie from 2000, you know, the one that Brian Singer directed. And I love the X-Men movies, except a few of them. Like at this rate, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, the first two films uh, were the best. At this rate, the first one from 2000, where it all began. Uh, the second one, X-Men United, uh, or X-2, was the best out of both worlds. Uh, the third movie... The Last Stand, which is one of the weakest of the bunch, but has some, some great characters joining in and some great action. Um, yeah, the fourth one, as mentioned, was the worst of the series. Yeah, where that we brought in the origins of Wolverine. Plus, we even got other characters like basically the the Black Ops team, like like we had Deadpool, you know, Wade Wilson and and uh, Sabretooth and all the rest but it was the worst uh, X-Men First Class which is basically a prequel so it's basically uh, taking place before they became um, as we know it today the X-Men I mean but they were very young so they started out uh, during the uh, high school days um, I thought it was fun I mean despite of its problems then we got the Wolverine, which is another solo film for Logan, aka the Wolverine. And fun movie, but it does have issues, but that's okay. Um, I didn't mind that film too. And of course we have X-Men Days of the Future Past, which to me is one of the best sequels of the X-Men series next to the first two films. Yeah, it was fun. I put that top of my list along with it. And then there's X-Men Apocalypse, which was a decent sequel. I mean, not as good as Days of the Future Past, nor First Class, or or the first two, but still, it's, it's as enjoyable. And of course, who couldn't forget Deadpool, which also came out the same year as X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> That was a fun movie, and it's also part of the X-Men universe, so it makes sense. But now we get to Logan, which this is the, the darkest of the X-Men series. In fact, it's very bleak, brutal, and also um, very gory, too. I mean, th this is also the first film to give it an R rating, and it's... Um, Directed by James Mango, who also previously directed The Wolverine. Which, I know originally uh, The Wolverine was going to be an R-rated film too. And that film was going to be as dark and and gory, but unfortunately the studio had to cut it down and everything. But it's not exactly as strong as it, as it seems, but this one on the other hand really is. That's, But it is, it's also a sad and depressing film too. And that's what I'm going to get to. Without further ado, let's review the film. It stars Hugh Jackman, who played Wolverine for 17 years as we know it. Uh, Patrick Stewart, you know, from Star Trek uh, The Next Generation. And he had played uh, Professor Xavier for, for a very long time. We also got uh, new actress uh, Daphne Keene. Very good in this movie. Boyd Halbrook, 
Stephen Merchant, or Stephen Merchant, and for those who don't know, he was uh, the co-writer and had work with Ricky Gervais, so they both went on to do the TV series uh, The Office. Yeah, yeah, they did the UK version, but they also were the executive producers of the US version of The Office. I always loved that show. Um, I actually had watched both versions. They were fun. So, he's very good in this movie, too. Uh, Richard E. Grant, um, great actor. He's been in several movies, including um, Warlock and um, How to Get Ahead in Advertising. Yeah, he's a great actor. It's great to see him uh, back again in movies. I haven't seen him in quite a long time. With uh, Eric LaSalle, Elise Neal, and Elizabeth Rodriguez. It's written by Scott Frank, James Mango, and Michael Green, which James Mango also wrote the story as well. It's based on the Old Man Logan, which is by Mark Miller and Steve uh, McNiven. And of course, it's also based on the Wolverine story by Roy Thomas, Lee Wynn, and John Romita Sr. And it's directed once again by James Mango. And James Mango, of course, is the director not only that he did the Wolverine, but he also did films like Copland with Sylvester Stallone, Robert De Niro, Harvey Keitel, and Ray Liotta. He also did the film Walk the Line, yeah, which is a biography on on the life of Johnny Cash, which stars Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon, which she won the Oscar for that. Uh, she, he also did the film Night and Day with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz, yeah, both of which had went on to do the film Vanilla Sky before that. The movie began set in 2029, where all the mutants are being nearly extinct, with several of the mutants not being born in 25 years. We meet Logan, who is played by Hugh Jackman, who just got kidnapped by a couple thugs who he just killed. I mean, he basically looks like um, a bearded uh, Mel Gibson, you know, when Mel Gibson was had some problems of his own, you know, having to deal with uh, being an alcoholic and making all these rants uh, back in 2006. That's what he looks like. And also, he also has a healing factor which ages him greatly, but he won't be able to live this long as, as far as it's concerned. And he started spending his days working as a chauffeur from a limbo service, escorting people in and out everywhere he goes. But he also um, spends time uh, hustling prescription drugs in Texas. So he lives um, with a mutant tractor Caliban who is played by Stephen Merchant and they wind up living in an abandoned plant where they're there to take care of Professor Charles Xavier, who's played by Patrick Stewart, who's suffering from a new degenerative disease which causes um, epilepsy attacks that he's been getting, having trouble uh, controlling his taphopathic powers. But one day, Logan was suddenly approached by Gabriella, who um, who's a nurse from a biotechnology a corporation called Akali Transigen the plan was he wanted him to escort her along with an 11 year old girl named Laura who's played by Daph King to a place in North Dakota which is called Eden which that's where several of all the children had stayed and it also turns out that Laura is actually a mutant. So she basically has um, the same powers that Logan has. Yeah. And that's the secret right there. 
So anyway, Donald Pierce is played by Boiled Halbrook is the head of security and suddenly tracks down Logan and requests that he help him find Laura, but unfortunately he refuses. But suddenly he uh, accepts the job from Gabriella before she was murdered. So Logan, Xavier, and Laura nearly escapes from Pierce and cybernetically enhanced enforcers known as the Reavers were chasing them around and actually captured Caliban actually force them to use his powers to track them. So they spend the whole time trying to escape from them by actually hiding out at a Las Vegas hotel, resort, and casino where they just um, spend time, you know, trying to relax so that way they can escape from them. Yeah, they were actually watching an old film called Shane until suddenly the Reavers had came and they tracked them down while Xavier suddenly um, started getting all these seizures that that's affecting everyone throughout the entire hotel. I mean everybody was already uh, suffering but Logan is like the only one that can actually move. So every, everybody was standing still uh, with that power so that, that seizure really affected him really badly. Tefer Pally, everybody freezes and and he came over and actually killed the, the weavers one by one also with the help of Laura as a killing them all which they also killed several of the other ones uh, before they, they escaped Anyway, so they were on the highway. The trio suddenly helps a, f a family known as the Munsons. They they wound up with their horses after a traffic incident. So the Munsons decided to invite them over for dinner. So they stayed over until something bad started to happen. It was up to Logan and Laura to to go all the way to North Dakota so that way they'll find, they'll find a way to to be safe until the Reavers come. That's exactly what the film's about. Uh, I don't want to give away too much but I'm just going to leave it there so that way you know because for those who haven't seen the movie definitely should check it out right away. Um, but I am going to talk about uh, the film itself, because it just, um, it definitely looks amazing the way it was shot. It definitely has The Last of Us uh, type of feel to it. I mean, yeah, The Last of Us is a video game. Yeah, mostly because the characters look rather similar to each other. I mean, the difference is, of course, The Last of Us was a video game about the zombie apocalypse. So it was going, so it's basically near human extinction. Same goes with this movie. I mean, this is going through a uh, mutant extinction. So, so they're like the only ones that they can survive um, throughout the um, entire government and and all the the enhanced enforcers that they had to chase them around because they're ready to to kill the mutants. It's definitely the right choice because. Mango wanted to do an R-rated Wolverine film for a very long time, and I'm glad he finally got the guts to do so. And Hugh Jackman um, also planned to actually do this movie one last time, since it only took him 17 years. I know originally they were going to do a, a crossover between him and, and Deadpool. That would be a good crossover, because I would have loved to see that. But it looks to me like it's it's never going to happen. I don't know. But who knows. Maybe he might change his mind. I'm glad to see that the film had the freedom to give it an R rating. Because the film itself is very brutal. Intense. Gory. Strong. I mean, damn. Those scenes alone where Logan actually kicks ass. You know, killing people. By clawing. Stabbing. 
Yeah, slicing their heads off, all of that. Yeah, same goes with the uh, Laura, actually uh, doing the same thing. But man, it was just really intense right there. It, it's just amazing. Seeing that this movie is R-rated, of course, yeah, this is also another movie to be R-rated uh, along with Deadpool. And speaking of Deadpool, there's also a teaser trailer that was being played before the movie. And it was a funny, hilarious teaser trailer that they got for the upcoming uh, sequel to Deadpool. It's like a short subject of sorts, and it, it is a short subject, where um, Wade Wilson, you know, played by Ryan Reynolds, is in the city, you know, just walking around, just listening to music, until suddenly he found out that an old man is being attacked and robbed. So, in order for him to save his life, or tries to be, he wants up um, inside a phone booth, you know, changing him to become, you know, Deadpool. <laughs> Which is really hilarious, too. It was basically a take on Superman, so they even played the, the Superman theme by John Williams. And, yeah, sadly the old man got shot, so he was too late. Uh, yeah, they give away, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, you can actually find that uh, online, including YouTube. So you'll definitely see uh, the fun in that. So, yeah, I, I can't wait for an upcoming sequel to Deadpool 2. I really want to see that. Um, but anyway, Hugh Jackman did a great job playing the role once again as Logan, you know, Wolverine as we know it. Um, he also plays uh, a dual role. So it's, it's a dead so I don't want to mention it. Patrick Stewart did a great job once again as um, Professor Charles Xavier. Um, yeah, he was definitely getting weaker now, very old as we know it. Um, he's also very funny this time around. and I, I remember some of the jokes he started making even though he still remembers um, all the mutants that he did. and and how he was suffering all this time, you know, going for that disease. Um, but still, I, um, despite of that, he's, you know, he's still the Xavier as we all know and love. And it, it was also funny too because he even refused to take the pills. And I, I remember that scene where, while they were on the run, uh, Logan was still driving, you know, taking over a. Uh, a, a GMC uh, SUV you know, because his limo is already uh, damaged, already filled with bullet holes and everything. Uh, yeah, because they've been chased around. Almost nearly got killed. I, I remember the scene where <laughs> he refuses to take the pill and then Logan was just trying to tell him to take it and then, you know, Xavier was actually trying to fold the pill and then and then he shows him and he's and he just took it anyway and then he said ah <laughs> yeah, that's funny um Def Keen as uh, Laura she's definitely a fine child actress uh, she definitely did a great job playing the uh, Laura who happens to be a mutant just like Logan so she definitely had a lot of claws around. Not only did she have claws um, on her fist, but also she had claws on her feet. So, man, I mean, she can really kick ass. I couldn't believe it. it, it there, there was a lot of scenes where she actually took care of herself, uh, beating down all the bad guys. I mean, slicing them, dicing them, uh, brutally... Uh, Stabbing them, uh, stabbing them in the face, and oh my god, it, it was really, really brutal. Also as brutal as um, Logan too, because he beats the shit out of everybody, clawing them out, dicing them, slicing them, um, going straight out of their, their heads and cutting them off. Oh my god. Also, Stephen Merchant did a great job playing Coliban. Um, he actually did use his powers. You know, trying to uh, trying to make everyone safe. I mean, he didn't want to track them down. 
but they forced him to do it. So that's so either way, you know, he did the best he could. I mean, he's, he's also an albino um, mutant. And for those who don't know, uh, Colobam was also used in the film by uh, X-Men Apocalypse. So we got to see him earlier before we got to see him later. So it was great to see him pop up. Uh, Richard e. Grant did a great job playing Xander Rice. He's the... Uh, yeah, he works for the Repin X headquarters. Who unfortunately, uh, his father was killed. So he's the uh, surgical head of, of the program. Uh, Boyd Hobbook as Donald Peels did a great job too, um, since he's the leader of the Reavers. You know, just basically going around tracking them down. You know, he, he's the villain in the film, of course, you know, along with uh, Xander Rice. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a very, very intense film. A very brutal. Yeah, once again, I'm just saying it. I mean, repeatedly, but that's okay. But it's a very strong film. At the same time, it's very sad, depressing, but yet, it was a very well made film. It, it definitely shows what was going to happen later on, no matter what. Um, I also love the fact that they used the the X-Men comic book in the movie. I thought that was really clever for the filmmakers to do so because now they know that part of this is real so all of this is is based on that so I thought that was really clever that they did that so that was cool and and I love the fact that it also has a western feel to it yeah I can even tell um, since they actually watched an old film called Shane and Xavier had actually saw the film when he was young so he remembers that film a lot. So they actually watched it on a big screen TV, actually explaining to Laura about the film. And by the way, Laura doesn't speak that much in the movie until we get to the till the final half of the film. Yeah, and that's when we notice that uh, she speaks Spanish. Yeah. And I know, I, I give that part away. That's okay, it's okay. I just don't want to give away too much. Um, but yeah, um, it's a very long film. Only 137 minutes. So it's like 2 hours and 17 minutes at the most. Um, out of its 97 million budget, really definitely shows. I can see it on the screen. Um, it's also a big box office success, uh, making over... Four hundred and forty-five million dollars. Awesome. It definitely shows. Uh, I mean, this is a great film. And you know what? I'm definitely going to put this up there along with X-Men 1 and 2 and Days of the Future Past. It's definitely, indeed, the best film of the series. And sadly, this is going to be the last movie where we're going to see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Yeah, so it has the promotion one last time. So, um, if you haven't seen this movie, rush into the theater and check this out. You won't be disappointed. So I give the film, Logan, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.